But so let's expand the framework. Let's imagine a sort of a framing out of how do we end up in this situation. Remember, as Vivian was just pointing out, I said earlier where they want us to go is where we're not really going to find any real answers or substance to our quest to understand how it fits together and where they want us to be, to be in the containment field of the control system, the matrix, whatever we want to call it, and where they say don't go is where, you know, that, that choice <laughs> of options. You know, do you know where the, the uh, source of the word heretic comes from? It comes from Greek word heros, which means choice. So to be a heretic is to choose something outside of the party platform, the state church controlled reality. This is where you're supposed to go. With the threat of excommunication, expelling you from the community of being in the matrix. Now I've noticed in my life, and I imagine every one of you has noticed in your life, that once you made the choice to leave the matrix, mm -hmm. you were attacked in many, many, many ways because the tribe detests a heretic, one who chooses to leave the tribe. Whether you're part of a specific religion or a belief system or a family or a national identity. And um, it's hardwired into us. Don't go to what's forbidden. You know, don't take a boat to the horizon, you'll fall off and you get eaten by dragons. Don't go outside of the accepted belief system. So what is the primary principle that all religions and belief systems are based on? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Well, there's fear. Okay, fear of, you know, not doing what you're uh, forbidden to do and things like that. It's <clears throat> and it's a reward system. It's based on two things. Fear of uh, something over here, whether it's the past or it's the future of hell or some damnation or some expelling from the community and the promise of something to come. It's always something to come. You know, it's also don't get into materialism because it's not spiritual. You know, um, so hence those who would be the controllers and owners of this reality, they'll take care of the materialism, you know, leave it to us. We'll own everything. <laughs> we'll control it. If you want to be spiritual, certainly don't get involved in the material reality. And the promise is always, you know, your reward is in heaven or any variation on that theme. You know, and New Ager type belief systems think that they're better than the old traditional foundational <laughs> religions because, hey, you know, we don't believe in that rapture stuff or being saved by Jesus, but we're just going to ascend. You know, what's the difference? There is no difference. We're going to get picked up by the UFO brothers and then God or whomever is just going to clean sweep the planet clean it all up of all this vermin and evil and everything else and then bring us back down because we're the chosen ones. We're the good guys. We're the one of the, uh, you know. And I've gone through all of it. I've been through every New Age belief system. I've hung out with it all. I've tried this, that, and the other and eventually just adopted an attitude of being an anthropologist, doing anthropological field research studies and going into every one of them. And my wife and I, in, in almost 20 years of being together, have been just serendipitously and or quote unquote accidentally, one after the other, falling into all of these belief systems, New Age and Christian and every other permutation. And it's always the same thing. You know, we're the ones, we're the chosen ones. We're better, you know. We know, we're connected, they're not. We just have to abide by until they're swept away, you know. And then there's the uh, bumper stickers uh, that you see now and then. Ascend already, we need the space. <laughs> 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 or the variation, would you rapture already? You know, we're tired of hearing it, you know. <laughs> but it's always 
out there it's always heaven you know there's always some form of paradise or promise um, and what are they telling us to not get into our bodies the earth you know life it's all about getting out so you know we're not grounded <laughs> you know the root chakra is blocked and um, all the rest of what I talked about this morning and <clears throat> there's something you know to come so just follow the rules abide by the law of the priest and do what you're told and you will be rewarded not this lifetime we get to control it all in fact make sure you leave it all to the church and the priest <laughs> or the state do all your work create the wealth leave it to us we'll take the burden of that wealth <laughs> so so one of the characteristics of the root phases of creating religion in the religious construct and the binding to the law of the priest is the two things the descent of kingship which is a Babylonian Sumerian principle and is basically you know predated with Egyptian <clears throat> um, living uh, according to the law of the priest and achieving your reward once you die you know this entire book the the book of the dead Egyptian book of the dead variation on the uh, Tibetan book of the dead <clears throat> I just bought this book a few months ago and I just read it um, not all of it but a good portion of it especially the introduction um, just in the last couple of weeks and wanting to get into this for expecting to do this this weekend and the key was that when someone died one of the elite one of the uh, initiates one of the pharaohs and you know whomever qualified to be given the rites and the rituals of the dead as prescribed by the book of the dead was that the more money they had the more they could pay for the rites and the rituals of the priest to do all of the ceremonies so hence this construct of a money system in which the people are creating wealth and being bound or binded to the money system so that the elite who would be capable through the training to gather in more wealth why wealth equated to the money to pay for the priests and the rites and the rituals to go through this process to ascend to or achieve you know going to the higher levels and there's a couple of key things there was different bodies that were identified in the Egyptian system that's talked about in the Book of the Dead two principal ones are the Ba and the Ka the Ba is what we might call the soul but it was also corporeal it was actually the body the physical body and the soul and the idea of the whole process is basically to move up to and merge the ba with the ka okay take your soul and move it into the higher spiritual body so you could be amongst the gods basically and the process required the rites and the rituals and the money <laughs> to pay for them so in between is the bridge okay the link the people were not allowed to achieve that only the elite this was recreated in the Catholic system where in about the 8th century the Pope at the time I don't remember his name basically created a dictator a papal bull stating that henceforward no one is allowed to access their individual soul by themselves they must come through the intercession interceding of the church and the priest basically restating the people cannot access their integration their higher principle their ka 
<laughs> except for staying within the confines of the law of the priest. And if you do what you're told, you will achieve that. Okay, of course, the wealthy could pay it off. They could pay for obeisances and allowances. You know, it's what I call paying off with the karmic tokens of the matrix, the gods of the matrix. You just pay for your salvation. Okay, how? By having more money. That created the basis and the template of the money system where the few would have all of the money and be able to afford all the bennies. Remember, on and na, which is the bridge, you know, we have the Anunnaki. Well, let me rewrite that. Anunnaki, which is a Sumerian word, Anu, which was also equivalent to heaven. There was Anu, the head honcho, the puppet master. There was Anu, the sun god. And there was uh, the realm of heaven to be achieved called Anu. Na, remember, is the bridge. What is the Pope called? The Pontiff, mm -hmm. which is the bridge. That, that comes from Pont, P-O-N-T, which is the Latin root for the word bridge. It's always about the bridge and who controls the toll gate. Mm -hmm. yes. Because then when you go to Rome, you have the uh, goddess Juno, who is also called Moneda, for, with Mon, remember? The, uh, the moon goddess, moneda, monetary, etc. Juno had a bridge, and you had to cross that bridge and literally pay monedas at the toll to get into the inner sanctum, or to be qualified to be, you know, a, a true being, a true man or woman or what have you. So there's always the intermediary bridge you have to pay to get to heaven. You have to pay to merge with your ka. Okay, so when anu is in the middle, the ba an ka, that's where you get your word bank. Because you have to pay to get to your ka or pay to get to heaven. Okay. You betcha. That and 75 cents will get you a bus ticket downtown. <laughs> because in Rome, the temples were the banks. And there was a street or a boulevard that all the temple banks were on in Rome and it was dedicated to the god Janus, which means of Anu, or of Uranus. <laughs> We're gonna find Anu everywhere, okay? Han, Nu, Ka. The spiritual body of heaven or the ceremony of light. Evoke the light and Anu's Ka and you will get to heaven. As long as you can pay the price and pay the toll and you have the money. So the money system became literally the literal equation to spiritual ascension, but it's all an illusion, you know? So where did Anu come from? Imagine before time and space existed, we were all one big happy family. I was a universe, you were a universe, we were all universes and we were all in a unified field, okay? But there was no movement. We needed an exterior or an external reflection to begin to move. Anu said, I'll volunteer. 
he said, I'll be God. Okay? To make a long story short, over billions and billions of years, we all continued to descend into a construct that progressively separated us from who we really are as the creator of all of, the, of, all of life and creation and the separation that Anu was all too happy to maintain of a projection of our capacity as a true creator. Okay, until we contained ourselves into smaller and smaller units and we find ourselves locked into these bodies and we have actually created a separation between heaven and earth. And it's a construct, it's a projection of the mind. And the matrix is literally what you can call the mind consciousness system that once we locked ourselves in, Anu basically sitting in heaven said, okay, we're going to just put a construct and integrate this mind consciousness system. And it's going to have three basic layers. It's going to have what we call the unconscious. And then two points of the subconscious and then the conscious mind, okay? Or the conscious personality that we individualize and create. But when we get recycled, that pre-processing center, we are locked into a mind construct that we're just going to continually recreate through time and just re-establish the same pattern or control mechanism, pre-programmed mind consciousness system the collective is the unconscious collective mind consciousness system. The two components of the subconscious are our parents programming. Okay? We come through the birth chamber, so to speak, birth canal, and then we are birthed and then we start building our conscious mind, but it's all built on pre-programming. And when we create the energy through being in these hamster wheels, continually creating or ex expending our life force, we are feeding heaven, and heaven in turn is creating that illusion of separation that we have to get somewhere besides where we are. Guess what? We don't have to go to heaven. All we have to do is clean this place up, and it is heaven, and there is no separation. And I'm not going to go into more of that detail. We can talk about it more tomorrow. But basically, Anu has been playing the game of all the gods. So the descent of kingship was a hierarchical structure of those who were willing to become the elite, to play out the role of becoming the controllers of the matrix, while everybody else was scurrying to get a position on the musical chair system of the mind of the mind and the money system to try and get some of the bennies. And then all of these things, karma, you know, just clean up your karma and you'll, you'll, you know, graduate to the next level. Well, look at India, that's constantly, you know, I mean, that's where the root of karma is. But there's seven to eight hundred million people there who are living in the most abject poverty level uh, imaginable. How come there's not more Brahmins, how come they're not graduating to get some of the bennies, you know? Why is there only an elite system, you know, that has very few in it? You know, we, and that we could go off on rabbit trails with that. I want to bring it back to understanding history, but I want, to, want you to understand, I'm going to go into this more tomorrow, but the separation and the creation in our mind of heaven, and there's all these little sub-heavens, there's the Jesus heaven and the Islamic heaven and the Mohammed heaven and 72 virgins and, um, uh, you know, the New Age heaven and the Saint Germain and Ascended Masters heaven and all the rest of it. Okay, it's the same pattern with variations on the theme. Okay, it's the exact same pattern. If you look at it objectively without the belief systems and the you know, the want, the desire of what we've all wanted to get out of the pain of being in this reality that is almost intolerable because it's been that way for me. You know, when I say at an early age, I looked around and said, this place is really screwed up. 
I want to figure it out. It's because I looked around and I looked and I said, it doesn't, you know, it's not right that there is so much disease and poverty uh, in, in this reality. Okay, so I, in my path up until three, four years ago, you know, constantly wanted to get out of here. And it got worse and worse and worse until I came to a point of understanding, hey, no, it's the other way around. You know, I'm going to take full and absolute complete responsibility for every element of what exists on this planet and accept the fact that I have accepted and allowed it. And once I take responsibility, I have the capacity and the power to start transforming it. So and we'll get into that more tomorrow. But this is the basic schematic, and it basically all goes down to Anu, who is the, um, the master manipulator and the master puppeteer. And he wears many masks. He wears the Jesus mask, the Yahweh mask, the Mohammed mask, the Satan mask, the Lucifer mask. It's all the same guy. Because if you got inside those belief systems, the Satanists absolutely believe they're doing the right thing. You know, and if you take the name of the two pillars in Genesis, because Genesis talks about the two pillars, and the Masonic system talks about the two pillars, they call them Boaz and Joachim, or I don't know if I'm exactly, Jacob. hmm? Jacob. Um, Boaz and, uh, you call it Jacob? Jacob. Jacob, okay. Um, in various translations of that basically you know you could they, you can define it as he who stands in strength but there's other ways you can translate this which is basically when he returns when he comes back and what is a standard of all the religion stories and mythologies is okay if we wait long enough he will return okay whether it's Nibiru the, the 12th planet or Jesus or any of the variations. It's always something that we're waiting for. There's a uh, playwright named Samuel Beckett. He put it very well. It's called Waiting for Godot. Yes. You know, yes. The existential dilemma of walking around the stage. Well, you think he'll show up? Well, I think so. He said he would. You, know? <laughs> you read the whole play and it ends exactly as it starts. I know he's going to come because he told me he would come. Okay. And that's the essence of the whole thing. And the two pillars, besides being the pillar or the line of the king and the priest, are also essentially when he comes or he will return. And it's always Anu, just wearing different masks. Okay? Promising if you follow the rules of the priest and you pay the toll at the Ba An Ka, you will eventually be allowed to merge your Ba with your Ka. Okay? Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds like the Hopis had a good take out of it when they said that we are the ones we've been waiting for. Yes. Right. We are it. Good, good. We are it. Yeah. Okay. Of course, Janus is where we get January. I'll remember as we go along because I do this off the top of my head, but there are many places where you will find the name Anu. You will also find many places where you find Ur. You know, of course, Europe, and so on and so forth. Zurich, Ural Mountains, Uruguay, Uranium. Which is basically Ur <laughs> and An the beginning and the end, the last stable element, yes. you know, 92nd element. We have 23 chromosomes, male and the female, we get 46, you know. That's the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant is taking the male and the female of the genetics and containing them and controlling genetics, controlling life, the beginning and the end. 46 times 2 is what, Nine, uh, 92? Okay. Hmm? <laughs> you think yeah. so? Or Ain Em? So the descent of the king and the, and the dispensation of the law were 
primary in the structure of Sumer and Babylon, just taking off from the Egyptian system. So, so the de descent of kin ship, kingship, came from the gods. Here is the gods to the bloodlines of the kin, creating kingship. and establishing the priesthood or the law. The root in Babylon is the story of Hammurabi, whose god was Marduk, same one as in Egypt, Marduk-Ra, who became Amun-Ra. Of course, I'm sure you're all familiar with the fact that all the Catholic Christian prayers end with invoking the sun god, Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're always rallying against the heathens and the pagans, you know. Um, so Hammurabi stood under Marduk, who handed down both kingship and the law. And he memorialized it in Hammurabi's stelae where he carved the, the, the law and that became the root or the basis of modern Western law. And it basically was from the king and the dispensation from the gods to the king and to the priest. Eventually, we have the justification of the merger of the king and the priest and then the whole story of the... Uh, um, the son, J.C., and his 12 radiating spokes. Is that 12? Doesn't matter. Close enough, you know, which is the zodiac, the constellation, as Jordan Maxwell talks about more extensively. And, uh, but basically, it's all a, a solar, uh, astronomical, stellar coat, the relationship of the planets. What I've looked at is, okay, if we are actually literally the creator and we've been entrained to project that outside of ourselves, that's the God spell, and project our authority into what? Church and state, which is the king and the priest. Okay, and everything is externally projected. But if we are truly the creator and all these polarities and... Um, opposites and, and structures can be found both in the planetary body, the solar system, and even in larger systems. And I'll give you a few basic examples. You know, we talked about earlier the question about how are the three pyramids aligned. Um, and Graham Hancock's work um, uh, points to that they were about 10,800 years BC 12,000 years ago, uh, they were aligned with the three belts of Orion. I mean, the three stars in the belts of Orion. Okay, I talked about the three bodies, the physical, emotional, and mental. We have outpictured that into the three city-state sovereign uh, nations or entities called Vatican City, City of London, Washington, D.C., controlling those three bodies. Then we outpictured and manifested that uh, as being at war with ourselves, see, because we've just created our, we've divided and separated ourselves to be good and bad and have our own enemies out picture. So in World War II, we had the axis, which is like a spine, axis of evil, you know, the axis powers. We had three powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan. We look at Japan, the social structure, it's very uh, automatonic, very um, uh, hive-like, and very controlled, that physical control reality. We look at Italy, you know, the emotional body, the Vatican, all the rest of that. We look at Germany, very mental, very mind-structured. Okay. Right. <laughs> we have we we have some we have some German genes here to attest to that. <laughs> okay. So 
so you know they were the bad guys we were the good guys so to speak right but it's all an out picturing you know the three bodies the three city states the three axis powers in in world war ii we have the um Remember I talked about Sanskrit having 47 letters. We add to that the three bodies, we have the number 50. Well, 50 is an interesting number. There's a, a orbital relationship between Sirius, the star Sirius, and the Earth. It's 50 years. And when you, if you graph the pattern of those 50 years and how it goes with each other, it basically creates a double helix. Oh. Okay. We have the United States Code put into 50, 50 titles. We have 50 states. Okay. Title 26 is the binding, uh, you know, onerous uh, IRS code. We have 26 letters in the uh, in the alphabet. You look at the different positions of letters and the numerical correspondences, A as one, B as two, et cetera, et cetera. 